Hello and welcome, my name is William, and today we're going to have a look at some source code for Dijkstra's Shortest Path algorithm. Just before we get started, absolutely make sure you watch the previous video where I give all the details of how to implement Dijkstra's and various optimizations we can use to speed up the algorithm. In that video, I also discuss two versions of Dijkstra's algorithm, the lazy implementation and the eager implementation. In this video, we're going to have a look at the eager implementation, which is faster. You can also find all the source code and the slides for this video and the last video at github.com slash slash algorithms. There should be a link in the description below. All right, here we are in the source code for Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm implemented in the Java programming language. Let's have a quick run through. So in this class, I define an edge class which represents a directed edge. You'll notice that this directed edge has a certain cost of taking this edge and it also has a destination node, which I call two. The node which this edge comes from will be implicitly represented in our adjacency list, so we don't need to take care of that. So when you go and create an instance of this class, you need to specify the number of nodes that are going to be in this graph, and that's the variable n. Once you know the number of nodes in your graph, you can go ahead and create an empty graph. This simply initializes our adjacency lists. So as you see here, I create an empty array list with n nodes, and then for each position in the list, I create another list. So this is just an empty adjacency list. This will help us add edges to our graph, which you can do by calling this add edge method. So when you want to add an edge to the graph, you specify the node the edge starts at, the node the edge ends at, and the cost of taking that edge. Remember that the cost of taking an edge cannot be a negative value. All right, and then there's the, just this convenience method to retrieve the constructed graph if ever you want to have a look at that. Then here comes the interesting method which actually executes Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. So in this implementation, I provide a start node and the end node. This means we're gonna try and go from a starting node index to an end node index. Note that we can also modify Dijkstra's to give us the shortest distance to every node, not just a specific end node. So there is a way we can just remove this parameter. We don't really need it, but providing the end node allows us to do a small optimization, which is to stop early if we know we've reached that end node. So let's keep it in for now. So in the slides in the last video, I mentioned that we can use an indexed priority queue to speed up Dijkstra's algorithm, and this is exactly what I'm doing. Below, I have an implementation of a min indexed diary heap, which allows us to avoid duplicate nodes in our priority queue. I won't be going over the details of the min indexed diary heap per se, because I already have another video on that in my data structure series. I'll make sure to have a link to that in case you want to check it out. But to construct a min index diary heap, I compute the degree of how many children each node should have in the heap by dividing the edge count by the number of nodes, and finally inserting that the optimal distance to the start node at the beginning of the algorithm has a distance of zero, which makes sense. Then I just initialize a few arrays. So this is the distance array, which is going to keep track of the minimum distance to each node. So initially I fill that with a value of positive infinity and I set that the optimal distance to the start node has a value of zero, perfect. And then these are just two supporting arrays that track whether node i has been visited and this prev array is going to be used to reconstruct the shortest path should we ever need to. All right, let's look at this while loop which contains the bulk 
of the Dijkstra algorithm implementation. So while the priority queue is not empty, we're going to first get the ID of the node with the shortest distance. And we're also going to get the minimum value associated with that node. So while we're at it, we're going to mark that this node is visited so that we don't visit it again in the future. This line right here, which says that the min value, if the minimum value we got from the priority queue is greater than the already optimal distance in the distance array for the node we currently pulled out of the queue, then we can continue. This is because we already found a better path routing through another set of nodes before we got to processing this node, which is fine. The next thing we want to do is get all the edges going outwards from this node. So we can reach into our adjacency list and get all the edges coming out of the current node. Then we check if the node this edge wants to go to has already been visited, then we can skip that. We don't want to revisit an already visited node. Then we compute the new distance of going from the current node to the destination node. And we do this by reaching into the distance array, grabbing the already optimal distance for that node and adding the edge cost. Then we try and relax the edge. So we check if the new distance is better than the distance already in the distance array at the node we want to go to. Remember that originally all the indices in the distance array are set to positive infinity. So the first time we visit any node, this condition will always be true. Then we just do some housekeeping stuff. So mark that the optimal distance to get to a certain node came from the current node we're at and also update the distance array to have the new optimal distance. Then we update our index priority queue. We do this by inserting the cost of going to a node for the first time, or we try and employ a decrease key operation to update the current best distance to that node to be even better. Then after that loop, we can check if we've reached our end node and if we have we can return the optimal distance to it so this is the optimization of returning early otherwise if we've reached the end of the algorithm and the while loop has terminated and the priority queue is empty then return positive infinity the rest of this class contains the reconstruct path method in the event that you wanted to actually reconstruct the shortest path from the start node to the end node. And this is pretty straightforward. Simply give it the start node you want to start at in the end node index, then run Dijkstra's algorithm make sure that the end node is actually reachable from the start node, then simply loop through the previous array and reverse the path and return it. As simple as that. Well, that's all I got for Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. There's also this min index diary heap I'm completely skipping over. Hopefully that's not too much black magic, but if you are interested in how this priority queue works, make sure to check out my video on it. There should be a link in the description below. So guys, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you learned something and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science video. Until next time, see you later.